The year is 2017. One thing that came important was John Wick Chapter 2 came out in the movie theaters. Now what's crazy is I was a fan so much about the actual movie, I watched it four times. Mainly four just to get the plot on the first times, but the last three was to actually check out the guns. Now what's crazy about it was there was one scene that came out to me in that movie. And that was, of course everyone would know, the catacomb scenes. Mainly, one thing that came to mind was an AR. Surprisingly enough, I actually built one of these earlier before this whole mass production that came out. And what's crazy is this cost $800 to do, but I did it by myself. But, lastly, let's actually talk about what is a dream come true for me and other John Wick fans out there is the Terran Tactical Ultralight AEG by EMG. And for example, the John Wick rifle. Let's get into the episode. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to another episode, and a very special episode, of Airsoft Mastery, because today we're going to be talking about is the Terran Tactical TR-15 Ultralight AEG by EMG. A very tongue tister, but at the same time, let's just call it in short, the John Wick Rifle. What's nice about it is, you have in front of me is the actual carbine length, and you also have is the short barrel length for your decision. And what's also nice is, you can either decide whether you wanted the M-Lock or the key mod version. But let's get into the rails. Now in front of me for the actual carbine length, you're gonna see is the handguard itself is gonna be around 13 and a half inches on the length side. And also what's nice is you have it still kind of furniture just like the real movie, the BCM furniture all the way throughout. Now what's nice about it is I like the style of the BCM rails, mainly because of the fact that if I wanted to make it more accurate in the movie wise, like this one in front of me, you can have the key mod version. But there is that little argument between saying M-Lock and Key Mod and which one is better. So what's nice is they also have the option to give you the M-Lock version as well. More modernized and still more combat efficient ready. Now let's actually talk about the outer barrel. The outer barrel on it is a 14 and a half inch with basically a counterclockwise threading underneath. But let's hold up on there. If you look actually on the compensator itself, it is actually the accurate setup for the muzzle brake like you'll have on the actual AR for Terran Tactical Innovations. And again, it's a nice style that I do like and you still have the crazy muzzle brake mainly you'll see that's in the three gun competition. Something you don't really get to see as much but again, they keep it very accurate for the way how it's built out. And also for the short barrel itself, you're gonna see the same thing except more in the shorter compact way where the rail itself is around 9.5 inches around there with 11.5 inch outer barrel and the same muzzle brake is out there as well. Now that we already talked about the rail, let's actually talk about the receiver. Mainly is for my Rhea Steel fans out there. This should be very familiar to you guys as mainly this is a receiver style that you guys would know from, oh I don't know, Aero Precision. This is basically the receiver that is to replicate the M4E1. It's an enhanced billet style receiver which is either the upper and the lower. But Let's not talk about it a little bit more. Let's actually get in more depth of it with mainly, that helps out, that comes out to mind to me, the flared magwell. It's really massive at a point where this helps out when it comes to actually reloading. Mainly also when it comes to the point when you need to do that speed reloads for those quick seconds that you have, say for example, in the real steel three gun competitions. And of course, what makes it more than a true actual gun design than coming from a true champion himself on the ISPCA, Taron Butler. But other than that, let's get into more of the actual in-depth of the receiver again. Mainly, the trademarks. This thing has trademarks galore for Taron Tactical itself. You have the insignia on the left-hand side of the low receiver, you still have it on the upper receiver as well, and of course, your serial number right on the side of it, and as well to that, the good old ways of saying where it's located in the company in Simi Valley, California, home of SoCal. So for the trigger itself and the trigger guard is it's an enhanced style that's integrated part of the lower receiver. Again, one reason why they would do that is basically so if you want to wear gloves, it can be still accessed through on your actual trigger itself. 
Now for my AR and the safety wise, it's just like your normal AR setup with your controls being safe, semi, and full auto. And it's still functional, but unfortunately it's only right-handed operations. But again, if you're left-handed, you can always adjust to it, no problem. And another thing that's also nice is a functioning bolt catch with it. Now that we already talked about the actual receiver, let's actually get into the more deeps of it is the actual gearbox. Now what EMG is actually known for is with the crazy designs of the way how the more realistic rifle is, they want something with the airsoft to be more reliable. And one thing that comes to mind is of course is throwing the actual SEMA Platinum gearbox on this thing. Again, I don't blame them for it because it is a really reliable gearbox at the end of the day. You have a micro trigger switch, basically known as the SEMA Zeus system, that is allowing you to put 11.1 lipos to help out with the performance wise. And as well as that into the gearbox itself is the fact that it has strong gears and really good compression. Again, everything you want when it comes to basically making your FPS more consistent. But other than that, let's get into the most important thing that I do like about the Platinums. It is an actual quick change spring. What I mean by quick change spring is you don't have to disassemble the gun. You can get straight into it by just removing the buffer tube and um, removing the spring guide itself and you're ready to go and putting back another spring just to whatever field you want to go play with it. Again, it's easy as one, two, and three, and that's it. Now what's nice about the actual EMG lineup for basically the Terran Tactical Series is the fact that they use a rotary style hop up and that's actually pretty nice when it comes to help fine tune whatever weight size BBs you want to use for the gun itself. Now, what's also nice is the carbon style you'll have here is around a 363 millimeter length and a 605 type or barrel. And as well as that, you'll see the same thing for the 300 millimeters for the short barrel types as well as here. What's nice is you can always upgrade these to be more of a tighter grippings using a 603 to help it out with the accuracy. So, now we're basically in part of the actual episode is when we talk about magazine compatibility. But wait, let's talk about actually the magazine that comes with it. The fact that it comes with the Magpul style magazine and the Terran Tactical base plate, it kind of just gets me kind of like excited about this more. And again, to come with this in the gun, and it's actually full metal on the bottom piece, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Because I mean, wow, how more can you get actually more accurate to the gun itself? But Let's get into other important things is mainly is the fact that it also is compatible to PTS EPM magazines and other SEMA style magazine that's out there. Also, if you still use high cap mags, this is, will actually be as fine as well. Like we tested out with our regular Lats Tactical high cap magazines and as well to that our G&G high cap magazines you'll see out there. So when we cornered these rifles, basically we were looking on average for even the short and the long version going from around 370 to 400 feet per second with 0.20 gram BBs. Again, if you do want to use this indoor, it's easy as basically taking out the buffer tube and changing the spring and the back end to make it more field compliant. So basically when it comes to packing the actual box itself and the actual rifle is it comes out really tightly packed and what's nice about that is it helps prevent from any scratches. Well, let's actually see what's in the box. Starting off with the mid cap magazine that holds 200 rounds and again is that nice base pad. As well to that you'll have is your card of authenticity and as well to that the back of instructions to actually operate the rifle. A little sample of BBs and of course we have is the rifle itself. And of course how are you going to load your sample BBs without other than just having is your nice little speed loader that comes with it. Again, EMG has thought about the idea of basically having whatever you need ready to go and at the same time, keeps it nice and tight. In conclusion, in regards of the John Wick rifle for Terran Tactical themselves. Now, one thing I will say is, again, it is a first to see Terran Tactical bring out an airsoft rifle. And again, Basically for a good job to EMG for bringing out this really accurate and really nice style for the actual airsoft rifle side. One thing I do like about it is the fact that the key mod version that's in front of me is really accurate to the one in the movie in chapter 2. 
And again, the performance is out there. The fact that the consistency of everything else from the SEMA Platinum Gearbox Series, the way how the receiver is built by the way how it looks like the aero precision type to the BCM furniture that you'll get. Mainly, you want a John Wick gun? This is it. And there is no other questions than denying that. And again, it's something that most likely I even bought myself. But other than that, what do you guys think about the rifle? Is it something that you want on your wish list? Or is there something else that would come to mind? Go ahead and check this out at airsoftmaster.com as well if you want to check out these other products. But again, my name is Mike, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. This video is brought to you by Airsoft Master.